Hello Algebra 2. This video continues our discussion of Chapter 3.6, which is about how to solve linear systems that have three variables. This time we're going to talk about the second of the two methods you ought to know, which is the substitution method. Before I go further, I have to admit, I find that the substitution method is only helpful in particular specific situations. Generally speaking, I do use the linear combination method to solve um, systems of three variables. So I wouldn't recommend this for most cases. Even so, those special circumstances do come up, and when they do, the substitution method is very helpful. So this example illustrates one of those particular special cases. The nice thing about this situation is that in two of the three equations here, you only have, uh, you're missing at least one of the variables. You don't have any x to deal with in the second, and you don't even have a z to deal with in the third. So in those cases, this three-step process tends to work well for substitution. Step one, and I'm going to paraphrase myself here, you rearrange one of the three equations. Um, you're going to turn it into an x equals, or in this case, I'm going to turn this third one into a y equals expression. And then second step, I'm going to take that expression that I get from step one, and I'm going to plug it in in place of y in one of the other two equations. From there, I'm going to figure out what one of the variables is, and then I'm going to keep moving forward from there. Let's look at an example. Let's look at this example um, and walk it through so that you see how the substitution method works in this case. Okay, step one, I said rearrange one of the three equations. As I said, I'm going to rearrange this third one, and you ought to see pretty quickly that it becomes y equals two. Moving on to step two, I plug that result into one of the other equations. Well, the easy one, and this is a particularly easy case, uh, this system here, I plug it in into this second one, and I'm immediately going to see what z is. I plug 2 in place of y, and I get 2 plus 4z equals 2, and you ought to quickly see that z equals 0. And that means I've already got two of the three coordinates that I need. And so I'm going to set these off to the side here for myself so I don't lose track of them in all of my writing. Now I'm at this third step, that keep going step, as I say. And what I would need to do at this point is plug those two values, the, uh, the y value and the z value, into one of the equations. When I do that, and, or when you do that, make sure that you plug it in to an equation that has that third missing variable that you're looking for. This one doesn't have an x. This one doesn't have an x. So it makes no sense to plug these values in there. You're not going to be able to find out what x is. You've got to pl plug it into the first one. So I go ahead and do so. I plug in um, the 2 and the 0, and I'm going to end up finding, as I simplify down, that 4x equals 8, which means x itself equals 2. And there, I'm, I'm done already. Sometimes the substitution method goes really quickly like this, and I've quickly got the place um, that's the solution for all three of these equations. In other words, the place where those three lines cross. Most cases aren't like that. Most cases, whoops, didn't mean to move that like that. Most cases are like this. This is actually the system that I gave you at the beginning of the linear combination video out of chapter 3.6. And um, you'll find as we go through this that we solved it much more quickly using linear combination than we're going to be able to do with substitution. But let's go ahead and apply these steps and uh, have you see what I mean. Step one, I want to rearrange one of these equations. I'm going to actually tell you, just to guide you along the way, which one I want you to rearrange. Rearrange the middle one so that you get it as a y equals equation. Hit the pause button. When you come back, I'll show you how I did that. OK, I'm going to assume that you did that. And here's what I got. I ended up with y equals 2x plus 3z minus 4. Now I move on to step two. I take that result and I plug it into a different equation. So again, I'm going to tell you where I want you to plug it in. Take the um, expression 2x plus 3z minus 4 and plug it in for that y value there. Hit the pause button. When you come back, I'll show you what I got. OK, I rewrote it this way. 3x plus 2 times that expression plus 4z equals 11. Now. I ought to be able to, and you ought to be able to, simplify this down and get um, a, an equation that just talks about x and z. And as I do so, I get it down to 7x plus 10z equals 19. Fine. 
Took me a, a fair amount of work though, and I still only have half of a two by two um, system. I've got a fair bit of work to still do. So as I say, keep going. The keep going here in this case means I've got to find a way to incorporate this third equation that I haven't even uh, looked at yet. And, um, and I've got to set it up so that I also replace y. So go ahead, hit the pause button, but put this expression, um, I'm sorry, this expression here, the 2x plus 3z minus 4, in place of that y now. When you come back, I'll show you how I've done that. Okay, I'm going to assume that you did that. And here it is. This 5x minus 3y becomes 5x minus 3 times that expression plus 5z equals negative 1, just as it had been on the right side before. Simplifying this one down, I end up with negative x minus 4z equals negative 13. So now I have 1, 2, xz equations. I've got a 2 by 2 um, system, in other words. And I put that together here. And now, as the instructions say, or as my instructions say, you got to keep going. So from here, I've got to follow the lessons I've already taught you to either solve for x or solve for z. And then I'll have one variable. Then I got to go back through this whole process. And you're going to find yourself, as you do this, often just going back to linear combination because it's easier. But I need to teach you this method for two reasons. One, as I say, there are some situations where the substitution method is faster. And two, there are some folks who just really prefer substitution. And if you're one of those folks, I need to at least have explained this to you. By the way, I, I know that I'm, um, I'm kind of giving this short shrift in this video. If you are one of those folks and you want me to talk through the substitution method more clearly for you and with more detail, I'd be happy to do it offline in class or outside of class. Here are some examples of some uh, different types of um, three variable linear systems. And you're going to get on my quiz the option of either algebraic method to try to solve them. I might suggest on 7 and 8 that maybe you would try these, the uh, substitution method. To be honest with you, I'd probably do linear combination even on these. But you might prefer substitution on these two. But for the remaining ones that are shown here, I would definitely recommend a linear combination over substitution. I just think substitution is really slow. Here's your homework. And um, I'll look forward to seeing you in class. And we'll go over the answers to these questions.